the design in this car wasn't exactly <laughs> one of the most important factors. It was basically... <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome to the Spoken Wheel Show and today we are on the electric special. Behind us we have an electric car, sort of an electric car. You plug it in, it's an EV, we'll get into all that. So we'll start off with what really makes a good electric car and what makes you feel that you want to buy an electric car. Not that you would. Well, if you did want to buy an electric car. I don't car. see anything wrong with electric cars, but just these are some of the things that we want to have if we were to buy them. If. One thing many people complain about with electric cars is the fact that they have no sound. I mean, they sort of have a sound, but it's nothing. People always say they're empty. So a good electric car, you don't really notice the fact that there's no noise. Next thing, simple one, needs to be nice to drive. It doesn't need to drive like a Prius or a Tesla where it's fast in the straight line, but the second you turn the wheel, nothing happens. And lastly, one of the most important parts of an electric car is that it needs to look just like regular cars. We don't need to be, buy an electric car just because it looks all rounded out like another Irish spring so far. We need to have a, the reason why we're buying a car is because we want a car, not a rounded out vehicle. Now, in case you were curious, there are some iconic and well-known electric cars. So here's a little short list of the ones we've come up with. So if you haven't realized in the past 20 years, basically any Tesla that has been produced, any model, any four-door, two-door, even truck that they have produced is, yes, very much- Well, it's not really a truck because it doesn't have a bed. It's more of an SUV. Well, it's an SUV with a covered bed. Well, it's like people who say, oh yeah, I'm a SUV, it's a truck, mate. No. It's not a, no, well, it's a truck because it's on a truck chassis. But they're not anymore. No, but they are. Moving on. It's a truck. The guy calls it the cyber truck. The na it's in the name. Next up, we have the Chevy Bolt. Not to be confused with the Chevy Volt. Next up, we have actually the world's best-selling electric car, the Nissan Leaf. They are still the world's best-selling electric car. As a matter of fact, I think they sold over 1 million units. It's pretty amazing when you think about it. Although, it's still hideous. The pioneers in electric car vehicles. One of the most important ones was the GM EV1. Now this car does, yes, look like a Mazda Miata that has bonded up the front end, but it was a pioneer in electric car technology. Uh, yeah, except they recalled all of them, so it didn't exactly work. And of course, not to mention the infamous Tesla Model S, because everyone knows Tesla started with the two-door coupe, which looked great until they started producing four-doors, and then everything suddenly took a bad turn, and now they're producing trucks, like we just mentioned in our last segment. And uh, one car that actually does come in an electric version, people forget it's electric, the smart car, even though it's not really smart doesn't actually do anything smarter than any other car because it actually still goes on the road, has four wheels, has two doors. Okay, some do have four doors. It doesn't have a trunk. Has it's headlights. It's not really practical. Well, it has to have headlights. Well, it does it's have headlights. It's stupid. If you buy one of these, what are you doing? It's the size of my bonnet on my 1959 Cadillac. So that is a statement for you to consider when you buy your next smart car. Just a fact. Just a fact. Now, part of owning an electric car is having the electric car lifestyle. What do I mean by this? Here's a little rundown of what your life would look like if you were an electric person. Now, one of the most integral parts of this archetype electric car lifestyle is having fancy water bottles. If not, you have no point of having cup holders in your car. I mean, car. look at this thing. It is tall. I mean, that is pretty tall. And it literally says perfect hydration. And you would not be imperfectly hydrated in an electric car, would you now? Not necessarily. Next up, you need to be of vegan descent. Vegan trees, vegan plants, vegan pork. You have to love meat. the planet. Except you're eating plants, which is just deforestation. Let's ignore that fact. Next up, a passion of yours needs to be texting and driving because as everyone knows, that's the most effective way of multitasking. They do say that texting and driving is actually an interesting form of multitasking and it helps you do things more, more thing. You know what, let's just try this. Let's do some texting and spoken wheel. Um, so, yeah, okay, so what was the next thing you were saying? Well, I was gonna say that, uh, they go to charging station. You see it's on the notes here, so we can text and- Oh, sorry, we were filming. Yeah. You see, it works. Yep. Very yep. effective. One issue with electric cars is they have no range. I mean, this car behind me, on its fully electric mode, it only has 14 miles of range, hence why we have it plugged in right now. And often the trend you'll see with electric people when they go on any sort of drive is they have to plan it out on where they're gonna plug in the car. So you often spend your time sitting at a Albertsons supermarket plugged into a Tesla charger for 45 minutes, 
sitting on your phone drinking a cup of terrible coffee. Mind you, this is now changing the way that people do cross-country driving. But you don't do that anymore. No, you don't. Now, even though pretty much all, and I would say all, electric cars are hideous, there are some decent looking ones. One of the greatest and most beautifully designed electric cars that were produced, well, concept, but is the Rimac C2. No, that, that is in production, but they call it the concept even though it's a production car. Ignore that bit. It has a beautiful front end. The design of it makes it look like a real, real gas car, but it isn't. And Richard Hammond showed his love for the design by doing this. The next car we have is the Polestar 1. It almost looks like a Volvo. Well, it is a Volvo. Is it? Polestar is like the AMG of Volvo. They're just the performance division of Volvo. So they did the V70 Turbo, the Polestar S60, Polestar V60. It had a Nürburgring lap record at one point, funny enough. Yeah, because that you can see the influence of the headlights. Polestar is the sporty Volvo. The sporty Volvo. It's kind of cool, though. So you see the influence of the headlights and the front grille. Very much Volvo-like. Well, because it is Volvo. Well, well, yes, of course, but it's called having a trademark design. Not that Land Rover forgot the trademark or design. And of course, lastly, the Porsche Taycan, which actually looks like it's crying half the time, but if you look at the rest of the car, it's pretty decent. It is decent. Although I do like the rims. The rims are beautiful. I love how they integrated the paint color of the car onto the rims. I think, it, and the fact that it, while you're driving it, it makes it look like the wheel's not spinning. I like that. Kind of like the Rolls Royce, except it just looks cooler. It's more creative. And it's simple, just a white stripe. Moving on to the least functional electric cars. These are electric cars that seem good, but they just don't work. First off, we have the Rivian pickup truck. Now, they actually tested this and it did quite well, but the one issue with these electric pickup trucks is they have no range. So if you were to take them off-roading, which sounds like a great idea because it can handle these off-road courses, the issue is you'll run out of range. So you'll drive to the off-road park, let's say that's 50 miles. You'll do your off-roading, that's 30 miles. By the time you drive home, you'll be stuck about 20 miles short of your house. So it's a bit of an issue. Next up, we have the Tesla Cybertruck. Which it doesn't really look much like a truck, but <laughs> It's, it's called the truck, so we'll we'll give it the benefit of the doubt. It has bulletproof windows. Which was also exhibited for us when it was debuted. And that didn't work. And the Kia Nero. This thing I just don't understand. I mean, I understand having an electric SUV. Good concept. But it only has 100 horsepower. And when the car weighs 4,500 pounds, it means it does 0 to 60 in 15 seconds. Now that is slower than my 59 Cadillacs. And his are pretty slow because they weigh how much? couple tons. Next up, we have designers versus engineers. This is the segment where the designer has one idea, but the engineer has to make the car practical, and they combine really awkwardly. Very strange things come together in this section. One of the first cars we're going to show you is the Renault Twizy. Now, if you look at it, it actually looks almost like a smart car. But then at the same time, it looks like one of those shopping carts you see at your grocery mart for people who are disabled. Not to mention the scissor doors which are probably stolen from some gold wing. And when you close the doors, they actually don't, well, I mean, they close, but the issue is you don't have windows, so it's kind of like it's always in a convertible mode. <laughs> Plus, even though it looks like a one-seater, if you actually zoom in, there There's is a, a second seat, seat in the back. It's more of a just a, a bench thing, a stud. And design-wise, I would not say it's the most interesting design. It is very modern, I will give it that. It does look like a Renault, so. I'll give it that as well. It's French. It's French. The baguette mobile. The Twizy. Le Twizy. It's too small. Who's going to drive something like that? Unless you already own a smart car and you want to upgrade. Okay, very well. Basically, every Mercedes-Benz concept. Now, I'm not saying every one. Okay, yes, every one. But not exactly every one. Because they did have some good ones. But the problem is, is they never actually threw them into production. So Because they're so unrealistic and expensive, no one would buy them. This is For the example, the one that you see on your screen right now is not exactly 
interesting. And the name they give it. For example, behind us is a GLC 350E. GLC is the model, 350, the powertrain, power-ish, about 350 horsepower, and E, electric. Well, this is called the FO15. Now, what does that stand for? And who wants to drive a Mercedes F-Class? Doesn't sound good, does it? Moving on. <laughs> I failed. I failed. Go Next up is the Lucid Air EV. First problem, it's taupe. Not problems with any brown cars in general. Brown is a very nice color for certain cars. Ahem. Not to mention the 1959 Cadillac in Persian Sands, also known as taupe. This, on this particular model, does not really look as good. I would have probably gone Unless for you like taupe cars. We don't. Next up, we have the Audi e-tron SUV. This is one I like quite a lot, particularly because in the design, it actually looks decent. The only issue I have with this one is the design isn't exactly legal. You might see that it doesn't have mirrors because there's these little cameras and there's these screens inside the car of where the mirrors would be. The issue though is in America, that's not legal. So the mirrors they put on don't actually match the design. And I must admit, this is probably one of the most beautiful looking electric cars that if you were to see on the road, you would even think it's a normal car. In and Europe, it, but in America, it has mirrors that just don't match the car. But it does look good. It, lo it, lo it looks really nice. It looks like a nice Audi. Although the 22 inch wheels, they look good, Joey. They look great. I love the 22 inches. That's huge. They look good. They, they do look good. But look at the, but at the least lines, they, the lines, the, the things. They, and then look bad. at the rocker panel. And then look at the trim around the wheel well. But this is, my issue with this body style is the type that looks like a dog ready to have it. Next up, possibly the greatest electric car of all time. I don't have to read this. This was a network breakthrough of electric cars. It's a big one. If you wanted to build your own electric car, this is how you would do it. So it's called the, woo, read them. The Top Gear Hammerhead Eagle Eye Thrust Jeff. Yeah, what a name. You might remember this from Top Gear if you watch Top Gear. I hope you watch Top Gear. Our show's kind of similar to Top Gear, but not really. Uh, if the BBC would like us to maybe come on Top Gear, we're open for it. Please send us an email right here. Now, this car is unique, particularly because of its tinfoil body panels that are um, wavy, let's just say. The, the design in this car wasn't exactly <laughs> one of the most important factors. It was basically... <laughs> now, an interesting fact about electric cars is typically they have about, what is it, 400 batteries, and that produces about 300 to 400 horsepower. Well, <laughs> this electric car, it only has two batteries, so it makes about two horsepower, which uh, it's not very fast. If you look at the seats, it's got the typical... Garden, sort of Adirondack, Adirondack chair. I don't know what Adirondack, Adirondack. I don't know even what those the, are. The garden chairs. Yeah. Then, like the Gordon Murray T50 in McLaren F1, has three seats, uh, except the driver's not in the middle. But if you're sitting in the middle, you got this little sanctuary on the top, where you can. It's called the sunroof. Yeah, except the issue is if there's a bump, your head is gonna hit the roof. Then. Now these are some of our disliked worst electric cars of all time, and we're probably gonna just start off by picking one out of a hat. Oh wait a minute, Derek. This is a low budget show. We don't have a hat. So we if we if we had a hat and we had enough time and money to spend on a piece of paper to write down all the electric cars we did not like, we would pick one out of hat. But we'll just go on to the Nissan Leaf, which. As you've probably seen, it's not the best looking electric car. Yes, it is very convenient, Joey. That is the BMW i3. All right, sorry. That is the Nissan Leaf, unlike the BMW i3, which will come up later as one of the worst looking electric cars as well. Next up, the Chevy Bolt. It's awful. I mean, the more you look at this car, the worse it gets. So I thought I'd savor your eyes and let's go on. Although we didn't really move on to anything that much better. Explain this one, Derek. Now, see, the problem I have with this is that it is nicely BMW looking. It has a small grill out of all the cars they have. I do have to give them that. They are fake plastic grills, which I do not like. Uh, I do like the color combinations they offer. This but is the i3 Sport, even though it still has bicycle tires. Same thing. Uh, it's i3. Uh, the windows look awkward, and not to mention the way that the back door opens. You must open the front door. It is like those... Uh, it's a flap. It's like those trucks, um, they, the, crew cabs, the crew cab. yeah, yeah. that you have to open the front door to open the back, which I think it's a bit funny because it's stupid. It's a bit funny because it's, um, stupid. I think it's a bit funny because it's actually stupid. The problem is, is it's a bit funny because it's actually really stupid. In, it's a bit of an inconvenience. 
you get my point. And finally, how could we leave out the legendary Holy Jeewiz? Now, the G Wiz is possibly Britain's greatest car of all time. It's small, it's practical, it was on top gear quite a few times. Uh, it's got a single windshield wiper like a Mercedes E Class, so that makes it cool. It's got six inch wheels or however big they are. I mean, look at this thing. How could you not love it? Moving on. <laughs> Yeah, awesome. that was the end. Oh, that's all the right, end. All right, all right. Oh, actually, on. hold on. So we are going to phone up a friend. His name is Dayton. And we're going to see what he has to say about the Prius. Great. Currently dialing. He's not going to answer. He might. No. Your call has been forwarded to his... Well, if Dayton was here... Here's what he would say. <laughs> all right, so that was what Dayton had to say about the Prius. <laughs> <laughs> He's utterly speechless. <laughs> All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed watching the electric special from the Spoken Wheel Show. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more content to come. As always, I'm Joey. And I'm Derek, and thank you for watching. And we'll see you next time. Let's go play some golf. Let's do that. Bye.